Welcome to Module 11, Financial Reporting. In our video two, we're dealing with a lot of common stock issues. Hello, I'm Jeff Mankin, and I help you learn accounting and finance. So let's talk about issuing common stock, how that works. Now, remember, par value is an important number. See the previous video. Well, par value, remember, is an uh, is a arbitrary amount assigned to a share of stock. It has legal uh, meaning. It does not have an economic value at all. So Delta Corp sells 2,000 shares of $10 par common stock for $10 per share. Here, the market price of 10 equals the $10 par. So we sell the stock, we receive cash of 2,000 shares times $10 per share. We receive cash of 20,000. The common stock is going to be 20,000 as well because it is at par value, 2,000 shares times $10 per share. Pretty easy. This next problem, we're going to change the par to $1. The $1 is uh, less than the market value. So here's what happens on that. Our cash is 20,000, 2,000 shares times $10. Our common stock has to be at par, which is 2,000 shares times $1 for the par. And then we credit that common stock for 2,000. And then our last account, the plug number for the 18,000 remainder is gonna be an account title called additional paid in capital for common stock. Or sometimes uh, it's called paid in capital in excess of par value dash common stock. So it's a long title. You're welcome to abbreviate it and just call it APIC, additional paid in capital, or APIC, APIC. And that's what happens. Both of those are paid in capital. They go on the balance sheet under equity. This means cash goes up, equity goes up by 20000 What if the stock has no par value? And it says, you know, zero par value or whatever. There's no par value assigned. Then we're going to debit cash of 20000 and we're going to credit common stock of 20000 If you have a chance to ever start a corporation and you have a chance to say you want no par common stock, it makes the life a little bit easier on the journal entry here. So cash and common stock. Cash goes up 20000 com Common stock, which is equity, goes up 20000 well, what if there's such a thing as stated value? So sometimes they say, well, there's no par value, but it has stated value. If it says stated value, treat it just like par value. So you sell 2,000 shares of $1 stated value common stock for $10 per share. It's the same entry. Cash goes up 20,000. Common stock is at par, which is now called stated value. A pick is the remainder. So use stated value as if it's par value. Well, what if we issue stock for assets like land? We, we're buying land by issuing stock. So here, the 20,000 shares of common stock with a market price of $25 and a par value of 10. So 20,000 times $25 is land is going to be debited, increased land for $500,000. Our common stock has to be at par, which is 20,000 times 10. That's 200000 and any remainder then would go into additional paid in capital or APIC for the 300000 Now, let's start uh, switching over to talk about dividends. I think we'll do stock splits maybe in the next video, but let's start with the cash dividends. Dividends, remember, reduce retained earnings. So we have beginning retained earnings here, let's say 75000 Net income would increase retained earnings, dividends would decrease retained earnings, and our ending retained earnings is 95000 So let's show this a different way as a T account. Well, what if we have 75000 as our beginning retained earnings? That's a credit. We increase it with net income, 27000 We decrease it with a debit for, for dividends of 7000 and so therefore the balance of retained earnings is 95,000. 75 plus 27 minus 7 equals 95,000. So that's the other way to kind of visualize the retained earnings. All right, let's start with cash dividends here. Cash dividends, 
uh, let's say Echo has 50,000 shares of common stock outstanding. Remember, outstanding is, is the ownership. That's where we pay dividends on. That Those are the shares that get to vote. On June 1, the board declares a $0.10 cent dividend per share to be paid on July 1st. That means every share outstanding is going to receive $0.10. Cents. So 50,000 shares times $0.10 cents gives us retained earnings of 5,000. We're going to debit retained earnings means retained earnings goes down with 5,000. We're going to create an account called dividends payable 5,000. That is the entry on June 1st. The first entry is June 1st, the date of declaration. And what kind of account do you think dividends payable is? Well, it's a liability. It's a liability for a month. Dividends payable, then we'll, we'll get rid of it on July 1st when we actually issue the cash. So dividends payable, 5,000, and credit cash for 5,000. So the net effect of this is uh, retained earnings would go down, which equity goes down, cash would go down. All right, thanks. This is video two. We'll see you in video three.